we're in the world of takeout. It's it's our new norm. We've, we're still kind of maneuvering our way through it, but we are definitely we're definitely in the midst of it. I'm not sure I see an end in sight just yet. I, I'm hopeful it will. We will have a new normal being open soon, but I, I'm not seeing it coming right. I'm not, I'm not seeing it right away. No, we did not close for a minute. When when we had to close officially at two o'clock on a Tuesday, I, I do believe it was March 17th, we we transitioned immediately into takeout. We created a takeout window, but before the end of the day, we were set up. Uh, there was no downtime. Uh, we were gonna be here, we were gonna be open. We, we made a commitment to this town, and uh, we intend on being here. No chance for closing, no chance. So a lot of times people call on their way to town or they'll park out here and say, Hi, I'm outside. Can you bring out my order? Or if we see them standing there, we'll go out and ask their name and then get their order out to them. Um, so, and it's a beautiful day, so nobody's here. And so we have so many orders. And then it's about, probably about, starting about 4, 4.30, it's going to get nuts. Because <laughs> everybody's going to want their order. <laughs> So, but that's okay. <laughs> okay we're, ha gotcha. we're happy to make them happy. <laughs> we're just learning what the new rhythm is. We close our doors to do curbside pickup only on March 20th. And for grocery stores, we were feeling the rush of panic buying the week and a half before that. So we were in the thick of it. It's been a long stretch for us. We still see some people who clearly only want to buy every couple of weeks, so they have very big orders. Um, there's still a decent amount of bulk buying happening, but by and large, it seems like it's calmed down a little bit. Or maybe they're all eating beans and rice they already purchased. <laughs> I think one of the biggest struggles is the bread, as well as local dairy and farm products, local meat, like getting the word out there about what's here, because those are the kind of things that people want to see or with the schedule of when we get them and come in and have them available fluctuates throughout the week. And that has been a challenge as well as the new products that we have, like how do we get the word out there about that. Um, so those are some of our big challenges. Interesting talking to you know people who manage businesses around the state. Everyone's creating plan A, B, C, D, E, you know, all sorts of plans of like how do we move forward? What's this gonna look like? How long is this gonna last? We don't know we don't know these answers. Um, I do know that I don't think we're going to be ending curbside pickup anytime soon. Um, there are people in the community who, due to their own life and what's going on, they probably will never choose to come back into a store, or at least until they feel safe again. So we will offer that. So I think if we do, if and when we do open the doors to the public, it'll be a hybrid where it'll be somewhat open and then also have time for curbside too. The trick with that is, we can't do both at the same time due to the amount of staff that it takes to make curbside available. So we'll have to figure out what scenario that would work in. Um, right now we're doing curbside business and mail order business. We shut our doors on March 17th um, and no one has been in the store except for Sandy or myself since then. We're taking turns during the week to come in and process orders and answer the phone. This is our pickup bin right here um, where people can pick up orders curbside during the week and uh, we're also shipping things to people's homes. If you follow us on social media, you'll see we've been posting a lot of book talks and videos of what's new um, coming in. And 
yeah, I guess that's it. We're running a warehouse here now. We miss people. We miss seeing our customers and talking about books in person. It seems like we're always in a rush to get off the phone because it's ringing again for someone else. But um, we're grateful that the phone is ringing and we're grateful we're filling orders and we're grateful to be here every day. So when we closed, we decided to close our doors on the 17th, we started by just putting a sign up and uh, sending and sending a, a letter uh, through our newsletter mailing list. And we put it out on social media and um, did a couple ads in the local papers to let people know um, that we were still doing, that we were switching to curbside and that we'd still be available to take orders. We put, um, big banners in the window letting people know how to order. Uh, it was a little tricky in the beginning for folks to figure out, for all of us to figure out how do you pick up your book if someone else is already at the bin or you know do I need to call before I show up and how do we pay for it, that kind of stuff. But now it seems to be working like a pretty well-oiled machine. People know what to do and and we're, we're doing it. We clean, uh, since Sandy and I don't live in the same household, we haven't seen each other in person since March 17th and we clean at the beginning and end of every day um, before we switch over to the next person coming in. So we're, we're um, disinfecting that way and of course, you know, washing our hands and using hand sanitizer throughout the day to keep everything clean for our customers. Well, looking towards the future, um, we're, we're in contact with booksellers all over the country and all over New England about how they're approaching the possibility of reopening and what that might look like. Lots of creative ideas out there. We're kind of throwing around um, knowing that we might have to have limited capacity, that maybe only a few people will be able to come in at a time to shop and maintain social distancing while they're in the store. Um, and we've also talked about maybe shopping by appointment um, once we're allowed to do that and then be able to disinfect surfaces after one customer leaves before the next appointment comes. There's a model happening in England right now where they're doing um, spa bookstore days where you pay a fee and you come in and you get a comfy chair and a cup of tea and a personalized conversation with a bookseller about what you like and, and then a whole bunch of recommendations handed to you. I don't know if we'll you know, turn into a spa bookstore but I think we'll probably do something around um, only letting a few people in at a time or by appointment to start whenever the word comes that it's safe to do that. So many people have not been inside this door for six weeks. It just feels like a really long time. Um, March 25th, when the stay-at-home order started, we closed the door and we um, figured out how we could try to do some business. So we, um, we offer curbside pickup. We uh, are here every day but Monday from 10 to 5 and hopefully people call and, you know, just want something. We've had a few people that have called and just had us send them uh, an assortment of birthday cards. I've been working hard on the website. Whistle has had a website for a couple of years, but it's been um, sort of a page marker, but now it's active. <laughs> a couple days ago, I uh, got to 100 items that are on the website, but you know, anybody who's been in the door knows that there's so many things and it's hard to, and you know, part of the store, part of my whole, like thing is that it's an experience you know you see the things together and it's fun and it's the music and it's the place and gosh this is long so window shopping is welcomed and the www.whistleemporium all spelled out dot com is the website and then we're happy to set up like FaceTime or you know, virtual shopping via FaceTime where we walk around, you know, I live with this darn phone in my hand now. Uh, we walk around and we look at stuff and so it becomes a little bit more like that. 
people that don't have FaceTime, some people that have other non-iPhone phones um, do the Google Duo thing. I learned about that. And so now I, I can do that. And I did a Zoom call yesterday where um, we did some Mother's Day shopping. Oh, so nice. that's cool. Yeah. And if you want a little succulent, they're so darn cute. And we have so many. Um, and it's hard to sell those when you can't see it. <laughs> so they're in the window. Okay. Um, yeah, we've got lots of, you know, and the, the toughest thing is cards. And we, Whistle has a lot of really great cards. I have a lot of customers who truly enjoy the cards and come in and buy cards. And honestly, it's been a really great thing for me. But this time, I mean, how does anybody buy a card? You know, <laughs> it's really hard. That's the hardest thing. Honestly, it's harder than buying, you know, lettuce. When in-person sales starts again, we will be wearing masks for as long as uh, it's deemed necessary. And we will be expecting our customers also to wear masks when they're here. And I'll have a few um, free ones, you know, a box of the disposable kind, just so that we don't have to just like shut the door on somebody. but. We really prefer that people go ahead and do the thing that's safe. I mean, it's it's the world pandemic. It's a global pandemic. Come on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's the CDC guidelines. Wear a mask. <laughs>